Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Talk Your Shit Sports Podcast. I'm David Bray here with the highlight reel, Patrick Valdez. P, say what up? What's going on, family? You already know what it is, man. We got another P. P, P we deep into it, man. We got another basketball legend out here. Man, listen. You know what I mean? It's about, to get, it's about to get really real, P. Man, listen. You know what I mean? All right, all right. But, 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 but I'm saying before further ado, we already know we got to go ahead and do some housekeeping things. I mean, uh, follow us on um, our IG page at the Talk Your Shit Sports Podcast IG page. Follow us on Facebook at the Talk Your Ish um, Sports Podcast. You can follow us on YouTube. Go subscribe right now. You can see this episode and all our, our other amazing episodes. So go check that out, the Talk Your Shit Sports Podcast YouTube channel. Um, but without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. We got Columbus born, Westerville raised, Denison University basketball legend. You know what I mean? Welcome. <laughs> welcome to the podcast, Ray. Welcome. Ray. Welcome. I appreciate it. Hype me up. He called me a legend. Now ah, I, I really appreciate that. Let's get it. I do. I do. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm gonna say, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm saying we legends now, and we want people to know it. Right. Hey, talk your shit. Right. Ah, let's get it. So right off the bat, tell us about your best game ever and why why it was your best game. All right, best game ever. I'm gonna go back to high school. Shout out to Westerville Central. Um, I, our point guard got hurt one game and I was a standing point guard. So I, I mean, I don't know that there was like a lot of high expectations for me. I think people always thought like I could get the job done. I wasn't like a scorer, but I was a, I'm an athlete. So, you know what I mean? If you need me to go get a bucket, I could get a bucket. You need the rebound. I'm gonna get the rebound. You need me to get the steal. I'm gonna get the steal. Like I'm on a mission when I'm out there. So they, they needed me to play point guard that game. And um, I'm going to say first couple possessions, try to get a little feel for the game. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm running the plays because now I got to learn it from a different position. I'm going from the three spot to the one. So it was like, all right, I got it. I could do it. So I come down court and um, mid-range game, kind of lost. Coming back a little bit, but, you know, not much. But that was one shot I was working on because I'm like, I can hit that. I don't need to ah. win threes, right. but I will. Right. Me too. Expanding Me the too. game, like expanding said, the package. I'll go get it. Right. I'll ah. go get it. Exactly. <laughs> so I came down court and I noticed the girl, like, she's playing off me. I was like, oh, so you about to let me shoot. Like, I've been working on this shot. Right. So ah. I've been in the gym. So I've been in the gym. <laughs> yeah, I've been in the gym. I've been in the gym. So I pull up, shoot, cash. Give me I'm that. Like, All right, cool. We get back. I'm playing defense. You know, I, when you score and you run back on defense, uh-huh. it's just extra hard. You slap uh-huh. the ground and uh-huh. you know, all that. I, I ain't do all of that, but I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I was feeling it a little bit. Okay. I'm like, yo, I've been practicing and it's, it's paying off. So right. come back down. Second possession, boom, we come back, hit the same shot, same spot. So now she has to guard me. And I felt like, I'm going to say that was my best game because I felt like, I'm going to say she, maybe she didn't respect me. I'm sure on the scouting report, it was like, she's not a shooter. She's going to drive to the basket. She plays defense. She can get rebounds. But now you got to adjust your game plan. Right. Because you see, I'm a shoot. Now I you came down off, twice. Off. Back to back. Mm-hmm. Right. I hit I hit the shot. Now you have to guard me. So I'm, I'm going to say that was my best game. Because I made them switch up their game plan. I felt good about it. Um, that was my senior year. So I was playing with, um, two girls that I had played like basketball with since middle school. We went to middle school together, played AAU basketball every year in the summer together. And then when we got to high school, we all split. One went to the Catholic high school that was in the area. And then once went, went to a rival high school, but senior year, we all got back together. And I always just think back on, that year specifically because my high school was when I got there it was the second year that it opened so we were like pretty trash I'm gonna say that we were not that (laughs) good it's a rebuilding year Um, rebuilding year (laughs) you know what I mean but I mean we're brand new so it's just like I ain't nobody worried about them like Westerville Central they good so we had North Central and South and South was probably like the better high school as far as basketball um, but there was one year where we beat both of them. I want to say that was maybe my sophomore or junior year. So it was like, okay, Central want to come up. Right. So by the time my senior year comes around, I'm back playing with my girl, my childhood, really good friend. Homies, we the squad. The same team in our, yeah, the squad. Exactly. Squad, yeah. So 
together and it just all kind of fell in. I'm going to say it all fell into place that game. We obviously didn't go as far as I would have wanted us to go. And I always think back on that time, if we would have played together from like freshman to senior year, it would have been crazy. Like, right. I don't, I'm, I'm going to talk my shit and say ah. we, we would have been a pro. We been ah, so you were a super team before LeBron. You were a super team before the super teams. <laughs> ah, ah, look, I ain't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> not one, I not two, not gonna... three, not four. <laughs> I'm not gonna say all of that. We won. We we was good. I'm gonna right. say that. We I'll talk our shit. We was nice, man. At every that was what point guard, small forward, center, nice. It would have been crazy. It would. That's it would have been really mind. crazy. At any point, were you a um, like a trash talker? Like, did you talk shit on the court? Man, I think I did. Just in, if if a girl was trying to like come at me, kind of crazy. Uh huh. I was just kind of quiet. I let my game do the talking. I might clap in your face a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that was good. Good play. Good play. Good play. Good, nice job. Nice job. Nice job. Nice oh, job. Oh, I used to hate when cats did that shit. Or I'm pointing to the person. I'm going like, hey, give her the ball. Give it to her. And she's going to give it right back to me. Ah. So I really had to be in my mindset, though. Like, that, that was one where I just had to be like, I don't know. I'm not even going to say I was in the zone, but if she did something that made me mad, I'm gonna talk shit to her. I would, and then be like, "Pass her the ball," and I'm talking to her like, "You don't want it because you know right. I'm about to take it from you." But like, come on, you know you don't want the ball for real. She's getting the smoke. But I'm telling ah. her teammates like, right? I'm telling her teammates like, "Pass her the ball." It's whatever. Right. And I'm like I said, I would never start it. If she said something or did something to me, then I'm gonna talk my shit a little I bit. Mean, that dog I wasn't a big trash ball. talker though. Did that dog ever come out during, like, especially during the rivalry games? Because I know during those rivalry oh. games, I was ready. I was on one from, from – from- Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I would say – I mean, me talking my shit in those games for the most part would be, like, trying to get my teammates hyped up and stuff because the rivalry games, the gym is packed, you know right. what I mean? And in our school or our team was getting a little better. So we were good. You know, like I said, we ended up beating like the two teams in Westerville and we wasn't supposed to be the team that was shit. So when we played them and their fans came in and it was really the fans, you know, you get hype off the crowd and yep, yep. all that stuff. So I'm talking to my teammates like, y'all, this is a big game. It means but something to people. Win, right? It means it means yeah, something. So, right. Yeah. So we're going extra hard and it's like, I don't know. It's like poetry in motion. It's just perfect. You know what I mean? Like we're hitting layups, but any every celebration after a point, or if we make like a good play, we go hard. Like you know, high five in, but uh-huh. you know, just hype. We were just so hype during those type of games, and I'm gonna say it was like the rivalry of the Ville, or I don't even know what they call it now, but it's like Westerville. Um, and we would play when we would play up at the college, the local college that was in Westerville, Otterbein. That was like the mm. big game over like Christmas break. So everybody would come out. And now, I mean, it was it was crazy. I mean, I cramped up like the almost the entire fourth quarter, but I was still trying to be back on the court. So during the game, they're giving me like bananas and drinking, giving me water. So I can Oranges, stretch, I'm doing stretch all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. Cause I'm like, no, I cannot, I can't not play in this game. I have to go. Um, and then just when we, my senior year also, like when we played and I mean, I want to, we was probably like the better team then, but yeah, just throughout my high school career, the rivalry within Westerville between North Central and South, which we didn't start even getting into the rivalry until I'm going to say like later into my junior year probably because I mean one of my paying attention to us we was the new new kids on the block ah. but we started to get better so it, it worked out for us but those games were crazy uh, I, I used to love them I used to man listen those rivalry games was everything uh right the proof yeah no nah, definitely definitely so right yeah absolutely so so why basketball and explain um to the to our viewers your love for basketball and what the game has done for you. 
Yeah. So this is, I could say so many things. I'm going to say I grew up, I got two older brothers. Um, we ended up moving into this neighborhood, bunch of different kids over there. And I, I think I said this to y'all yesterday when we were having a conversation, it was like a heart, Hey Arnold type situation, just right. like different kids, different backgrounds, but we were all cool. And we all get together like after school, especially during the summertime and literally play every single sport. So baseball, soccer, bat, tennis. My dad bought me a tennis racket because he was for sure that I was going to be the next Serena Williams. And I love Serena Williams. So I'm going to plug that. She is my favorite athlete. Shout out, shout out to the queen. Um, shout out Serena. Oh, yes. The whole, Serena, the whole family. The whole, yes. the whole, the whole so, Williams family. The whole, the whole squad. Um, I was playing basketball at a friend's house. It was this kid named Jordan and we were just playing. He was like the one of two people that have like an actual hoop. So we were over there shooting and I'm just shooting. And his dad comes outside and is like, no, this is how you're supposed to shoot. So he shot, he taught me how to form shoot, like where to place my hand on the ball. He's like, when you shoot, you need to follow through like this. So your finger should be pointing through, like, you know, the, the ball's going through the hoop. And ever since then, I'm going to say that was the first time somebody actually took time to teach me one of the sports. Cause I was just playing, like I said, I was an athlete. So I could see people playing baseball on TV and I don't watch baseball, but I know like the batter stance. So I could just imitate that, you know what I mean? Or yeah. play soccer and I'm, trying to kick the ball and score a goal so I could do that but that was the first time somebody actually stepped to me and was just like no this is how you need to shoot and I'm gonna say I just took a like really deep interest in basketball from that day on I was in elementary school at the time so I lived in Columbus at the time um and then when I moved I moved to Westerville in sixth grade so that was the first time I'd ever played organized basketball. And I had a friend that I went to elementary school with. Her father was very cool with my parents. Um, and he was just like talking to my mom, like, yeah, you should let her play with her. I'll take them to practice. Like, you don't got to worry about it. Because my mom and dad are all like school, 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 study, study, study. Like, that's what you got to do. Um, but I think a lot of other people saw it in me and I didn't even know I'm just like oh this is cool I'm, I'm gonna perfect this now he taught me how to do it so I want to perfect it and that was just something that carried with me for throughout my entire basketball journey but I'm gonna say from that day on when I started playing organized sports in sixth grade through my time at Denison and I graduated in 2012 I know I just aged myself a little bit but um ah, I never I mean young. every single you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah, age is a state of mind I always tell people that right 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 um, but um from sixth grade up into my senior year of college like there was not one summer where I did not play basketball mm. and that was just like or was involved in it in somehow. So traveling for AAU, uh, if I'm going to some type of showcase, and then, you know, when I knew like my basketball career, obviously it was going to be over. I got into scouting a little bit. So I, I, I did that for a few years and that was dope also. Um, Cause one big thing with me, and I've learned this over the years, I'm definitely a person who really likes to help people. So if I can help put you on to something that you're passionate about, I love that. And I like having that relationship with, you know, like the high school girls and just talking to them about what they wanted to get into, what schools they're possibly looking at and stuff. So kind, kind of making that connection um, and just building those relationships and really trying to help them was my one of my goals. Um, and I want to say that is why I coached a little bit because I okay. felt like oh this is cool I could do this you're on the other side so, now yeah now you're on the other side and it is a different side and I'm gonna tell y'all I did <laughs> not last very long I did it it didn't it didn't work out for me I definitely what thought I wanted to coach I even did a, um what what were you gonna say sorry what was the age group that you were coaching so they were high school and I was fresh out of college so I was like 21 22 years old and they were juniors 
in sophomores in high school. So what they're like 16, 17 years old, I'm not that much older than them. So right. that experience was interesting. It was cool. I mean, I was fresh out. So I yeah. felt yeah. like I still had basketball left in me, you right. know, and I'm watching these young women play and they're not going hard and they're not hustling. And I, I say that now and I'm just yeah. like, damn, that shit sounds so corny because <laughs> my coaches used to yell that at me all the time or just like our team. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? I am running. I am. But when you see somebody and you've seen them be at their best or you've seen them go hard and now you, you see them in a situation where you know they're slacking it, it, oh, it, it bothered me so much. So it just made me think back to a couple of situations where I was the player and my coach was talking to me like, what the hell are you doing? I know that you can do better than this. I know you're faster than this. I know that you're not trying. And in my mind, I'm just like, no, I am trying. But now I'm just like, you know, I was definitely making an excuse. I was probably trying to save my energy or I was probably mad about something to where I was just like, man, I don't even want to be here anymore. Uh, so me being on the coach's side of it and getting to experience that aspect of it, I was just like, yeah, I don't know. And they're high school teenagers. They got attitude problems. Yep, yep, yep. Not a lot of ego. They, they figure you know? out the world for the first time. Right. Yeah. I mean, yes. they're trying to let you know, hey, this yes. is where I stand. This is my spot. Right. And like I said, I wasn't much older right, than right. them at the time. But they, and they had a, a lot of them had a lot of ego, you know? Right. They're like, no, I am nice. Like, I can do this. And me being in my player mindset, I'm like, you're not that nice. So you need right. to be at practice. You had to you step away to be, from that. You right. know what I mean? You was on their neck. I did. You was on their neck. And and I was just, just, play one on one. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> So I'm thinking to myself, like, maybe it's, it was just too, in hindsight, I just was like, maybe it was just too early for me to get into that mm. lane, because I'm still thinking like a player. I would, I didn't have that coach's mindset. I'm just looking like, ah, because I mean, I would even be the player if I knew one of my teammates wasn't working hard enough, or if you didn't hustle for a ball that I knew you could get, I'm coming at you like, what's up? What are you doing? Like, you, you're, you're not only affecting us; you're affecting everybody. So, and 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 yeah, I had to. That's amazing because, and and I hope that that experience doesn't take away like another opportunity for like like for you to coach because that's exactly as I, I think for me like that's exactly what I value. Like, if I'm stepping if I'm stepping between the lines, I know I'm risking injury. So, in, in honor of that, like I need to go hard. I need to compete. I need yes. I need not to waste my teammates' time for how much time they're sacrificing to oh, learn this man. sport, to do like 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 all the travel, all the other sacrifices off the court that I have to take in order to be here. I want everyone else else on the same page. Like let's we going after a championship. Man. We are not fucking around. Man. So like if you can't get with that, so I understand like from you is like you seeing these kids like ah they don't really understand yet, but like you caught them in their development process. You know what I mean I think that's the hardest yeah. part because. Yeah. At that age, 17, I want to say 16, 15, that's when they, they feel like as though, like, you know, I, I I have all the answers to the test. Like, no, bro. You're, yeah. You're just, even, you're just now scratching the surface. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And, and at that age, they think they're no, going to be, you like, they right. be hooping forever. Right. They don't, right, they don't right. realize they got like another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> when it hit me. Uh, when it hit me, I was well out of college. And uh, I said, okay, this, like, you ain't young no more. You need uh, to slow down. But no, you're exactly right. And I think it's just, it was like a lot of that ego for me, but also just trying to take a step back and just being like, I was in this same spot just five, right. six years ago. So trying to be empathetic about it. But I really think I was just too early right, in right. my, I'm going to say, coaching career for me to just like have a different mindset about it. So I was just like, yeah, I don't know if coaching is for me. I feel like it's, I still feel like I got some basketball playing left in me. Um, okay. So that okay. was one of the things that like, it was a lot of the attitudes I think in the egos, but yeah, that was, that was definitely one thing that deterred me away from coaching, but I, I definitely thought that was something I was going to do when I was at Dennis and I actually did the uh, WBCA program. Mm -hmm. um and my coach shout out to coach lee wrote me like a letter of recommendation so they had a program that goes on during the women's ncaa tournament 
and I got to fly out to Denver and we did like a couple like courses or classes or whatever. And they kind of just talked to you about like becoming a coach and mm -hmm. how you got to be and the attitude and what you're looking for and how you need to present yourself when you're coming into a room, just period, not even for the job, but just mm -hmm period right. and it was super dope one of the best things about that experience was, was every single coach that they had present to us in that forum was a woman mm. and I think that I love that you know they always say like representation matters I think that's super Big important because now you facts. see a lot of women basketball coaches and they're out there and they're reaching their prime. And I'm gonna shout out the black ones, especially, you know what I mean? Because they're out here. So like the Arizona coach in South Carolina, just with oh, this yeah. tournament that just passed, you know, that's super dope to see because that's not, I'm going to say something that we saw a lot, you know, the dominant teams you see all the time, especially then were like a, a UConn, obviously a Tennessee, then you got Notre Dame. And I feel like the women's mm -hmm. game is mixing it up a little bit more, but all, people always saw Gino and shout right. out to him because he's doing an amazing job to right. be that dominant for and Pat Summit, as long as he has been. Muffy you know McGraw. what I mean? Pat Summit, especially right. legend. Right. I got a story about her, <laughs> Pat Summit. Um, so I met her one oh, time. Wow. Wow. And yeah, 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 yeah. To her. She's a legend for we gotta sure. Hear this. We got to hear legend this. Legend in the game. Hold on, hold on. So, so Super before, nice. So before you, before you start the story, I want to let everybody know you can only find us here on the Talk to Shit Sports <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So it's a short story. It's not even. So we went to, this is my AAU team. And AAU is from what I knew, I haven't been to any AAU tournaments now, but that is a great circuit and a great forum for players to be seen by multiple coaches at one time. So a lot of people, I think, especially back then, you think of like a high school type of thing, but you're going to an AAU tournament and there's, a, I mean, Duke, Ohio State, like all these coaches are coming to this tournament to probably see one girl or maybe two. Right. And they find somebody else in the mix because they're just seeing so, so much, much talent. talent. So that AAU circuit, yes, the AAU circuit is crazy and it's a great platform like I always. And then also, I mean, you got to find the right program for you, but it's definitely a great way to get noticed by, you know, a lot of coaches at in one setting. Right. Um, but we went to a tournament. It was called the Boo Williams Tournament and it was in Virginia. So I'm probably like, uh, was I in middle school? I had to be in middle school. I think I was in like seventh or eighth grade. We're down at the Boo Williams and we're sitting in the stands just watching this one team that they were. So they, they broke you down into like different brackets. I wouldn't even say off skill level, but it was off age group and stuff like that. So my team was watching another team play. We had just got done playing. So we're just chilling, sitting in the stands and um, taking notes. There was a right. lady. Yeah, just just yeah. Taking notes. I'm we was probably clowning too, but just <laughs> watching the game. Shit. Talking and, mad shit. <laughs> yes, literally. <laughs> um there was a lady sitting like two rows in front of us, and she had on this um sweater. It was like the I don't know, a little square. So it's like purple. It was like all kinds of colors. And I was talking to my teammate like, yo, that lady sweater is trash. Like, <laughs> why did she wear that? I'm like, we in Virginia. Oh. I'm like, we're in Virginia. It's the summertime. It's hot. I'm, and I'm like, I know she hot. Like, why you got that on, ma'am? She turns around. It's Pat Summit. Oh my it God. was Pat Summit. And I was like, oh, Shit, I just said Pat Summit sweater was ugly, but I had to stand on it, right? So I'm like, the sweater is ugly, but she is legend. <laughs> so we <laughs> Pat, Pat woke up that so... morning like it's not about the brands, but who wins? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wouldn't even say she literally just turned when she turned around. Oh, I, I don't know if she heard us Salute to the talking. I hope she didn't. I hope she didn't. But um. 
she turned around and she kind of just like so I'm like oh my gosh that's that summit so she waved at us and we all like talked to her after and took pictures she was so nice like super down to earth just super kind re- real friendly it was just you know they give you that coach's speech like keep working yep. hard but asking you questions like oh what position you play what school do you go to like she really was interested and was just like you know keep working hard and stuff like that so it was that experience was dope I was a little embarrassed because you know I found out it was passed on it, no. but I will stand on the so, fact so that smoke. the sweater was trash. You was throwing, mad fashion, you was throwing mad fashion smoke at Pat Summit. You was throwing mad fashion smoke. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. But I had to. I had to stand on it. I had yeah. to stand on it. You know what I mean? Like I already said it. Now I don't know who you are. I can't change it. She definitely right. was trash. But she shout out to Pat. Got shout the rings though. And she's deaf, and she deaf coached uh, one of my favorite basketball players. Uh, we are talking about AAU. Like, who did you play? What notable players did you play during that, um, during your AAU? Oh, man. So when I played for uh, this team, I played for two. I played for a bunch of teams, obviously, during my AAU career. But um, we went down to the national tournament and it was down at Orlando Disney World Wide of Sports and we played against Glory Johnson. She went to Tennessee and I think she's still playing pro right now. I don't know what team she's on, but we were doing layup lines and she was dunking in the layup lines and I was like, yo. Mm who's guarding her because <laughs> who's about to guard her because I I can't let you dunk on me that's disrespectful she did not dunk during the game but she was definitely one the Abuma K sisters so Janae and Neka I want to say they play for this team out of, out of Texas called Cypher Shop and obviously they were super good um another player who she played in the organization that I played with and there's a bunch like of Ohio players I'm gonna shout them out shout out to all Ohio shout out to Capital City Comets those are two of the teams that I played for um but like a Jantel Lavender Jessica Davenport um they went to Ohio State and then obviously played pro um another girl who grew up in Columbus and she played AAU still super cool she just signed a contract with the New York Liberty her name is Asia Taylor so um, I knew her Asia. from high school and just like Shout the basketball Asia. circuit. Yeah, no, she's dope. Shout out to Asia. She's a hooper, so check ah. her out. Um, and then when I was coaching, I got the chance to watch and see. Um, so I put, I coached like the B team. The A team was obviously that that team. You know what I mean? They they pulled them together from wherever. Um, but uh, Kelsey Mitchell and I believe she's playing for the Indiana Fever, but she played. Mm-hmm at OSU and when I tell you there's probably only two women basketball players that I've seen that can handle the ball the way that she does and just like her game is crazy if you've never watched her highlight tape you need to check it out she was nice like super super nice and then me just playing against other players like a uh, Taisha Moss, super good. We we were on the same team, and then I played against her when I ended up switching teams. I think she played at Xavier. I had another girl, um, Kiki Man, super good player, mm-hmm. just super athletic. She was hitting that Euro step before people knew what a Euro step was over ah, here. It was, it was it. crazy. And then another one. Oh, yeah, she was nice. You know what I mean? Um, Maxine O'Hawkum, which was one of the ones I was telling you, her dad is actually the one who close to my mom, still talks to my mom and dad to this day, um, was like, yeah, Mm -hmm. she can join this AAU team. We'll take her to practice. So Maxine, super good player. Just a lot, man, a lot. Like the list goes on and on. But yeah, I've definitely played against some really, really good competition. And a lot of them are still playing either overseas or like I said, in the league, and then some of them are, are coaching now at right. their old high schools or wherever. But yeah, no, it's been super dope to so even what, see their journeys from where we were. Right, right. So what were like those practices like? Like to play, like to know that you're playing with like some of like the country's best. Like what were y'all's practices like? I, I, oh, I, man. I, I can only imagine. All right. I'm going to tell you my first, and I'm going to speak to my all Ohio experience. My first 
practice with this specific Ohio team and I played with them in when I got to high school. Um, we had two, we were doing two a days on the weekends. Our first practice was all running. We just ran the entire two hours. Ah, that was it. That's all on, we did. Get on and the I line. Like, get on the line. I'm a t- I mean, first practice ever. Like we got to meet the team. We met our teammates and it's like, all right, y'all first practice we run in and I was like what like dang I don't even know her name like can we just (laughs) can we break the ice we did not touch the ball that practice we did not touch the ball we didn't break the we broke the ice but we were trying to hold each other up after running for two (laughs) hours yes and I mean that just I was like wow this is this is this is wild this is crazy but yeah, no, I mean, practices were good. I'm going to say we, we scrimmaged a lot of good players too. So that just like those, that competition where it was within the organization, but we're playing like the A, A and B team or the C team and just kind of mixing in that, that competition. So no practices, I'm going to say we're pretty crazy. And the scrimmages were good too. Like that was probably the best right. were the scrimmages where we brought in just have like a, a common site, you know what I mean? And bring in teams from like the local area and just play literally basketball all day long. Wow. It was, it was crazy. That's lit. Oh yeah. I mean, so like to, like to just go back a little bit now that you got this close to experience. So right now who, who off the top of the head, like who was, were some of the coaches or mentors or family that helped you like, helped you like realize your potential like hey this is the route you need to go basketball is really a part of who you are like who supported the dream who supported you like your two days like your AAU trips like who like who was behind you the whole time man I'm gonna say my first AAU coach Chris Blackwell shout out to him I don't even know where he is right now but he was the one who told me so that's when I was telling you all that was like my first time playing organized basketball. He was my first coach ever. Mm-hmm. And he was a firecracker. I mean, like my dude would call timeout to cuss people out in the stands if he didn't like what you were saying. Like he was that type of coach, but he was just like super amped up and he really had me just like into myself. Sorry, I, I'm somebody's calling me um he really had me just wanting to play but he came to me one year I want to say it was after my first year playing for him he was like you got a lot of potential he was like you're an athlete so we need to couple your athletic abilities with your basketball skill and he was just like hey you got skills but if you really work at your game you could be really good he's like I think you have the most potential that I've seen in in a player in a while. And I'm going to say that stuck with me throughout my entire basketball career. And he was definitely probably the most influential coach that I had throughout my entire basketball career. I'm going to shout out to Chris Blackwell. Like he was great. It's fiery as he was. I really enjoy. Yeah, man. I really enjoy playing on his team and like I said, that was my first introduction to organized sports. So he made me feel comfortable, but he also, cause you know, there's coaches and they can talk to certain players a certain way. So yeah, you can right. go to a player and cuss them out or you tested them and stuff like that. And you know, which ones are going to respond to you the way that you want them to respond. You know what I mean? So he was definitely, I thought he was like a player's coach. Mm-hmm. Like he could key in on that one thing that he knows is going to set you off, but set you off in a good way to make you play better. And he would go right at it. And yeah, no, he definitely number one, most influential coach that I've had for sure. How important was that conversation as an athlete? Cause I remember when I was playing um, baseball and um, this D this was on um, Farrell. I know you, you, and Farrell went back and forth that time, mm-hmm. but um, I remember my sophomore year, um, we made it to the state tournament. We lost in the first round to our, actually our rivalry um, team, Easty. And I remember I sat in that game. I played my ass off. I played my ass. I think I went 
I think I, I think I went two for three that game with the walk or whatever, but I played my ass off on offense. Boy, it was on and, fire. Boy, it was on fire. I, 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 was, I was working, but EC, EC was good that year. Hey, talk your shit. And, and we lost. And I remember I sat on the ground and I'm crying. And I remember he came over to me and he was like, listen, if I had eight more other players that played just like you, we would have made it, we would have been a problem. And I remember having that conversation with him and that motive, that motivated me. And I remember that conversation that, that motivated me throughout my whole like baseball career. Cause I remember like playing hard, like, uh, you, listen, you can't short, you can't short change hard work. And when you're playing hard and, and, and you, Absolutely. And, you're, and, you, and you're busting your ass, it's like, yo, no matter when, when lose or draw, like if you give it your all, you win regardless. And that stuck with me. And that, and, and you know, that's how I, you know, I played my whole, you know, entire, you know, baseball career. But yeah, that, that conversation kind of helped me. And I just wanted you to kind of, kind of like, I guess, dive in kind of deeper to that conversation that you had with your coach and how important that conversation was. Oh man, I'm gonna say it definitely changed the way that I thought about basketball because at that time I knew that I was like okay, but I was also new to the sport. Yeah. Um, and my talent was very raw, like my skill set was very raw. I could dribble, but I'm I'm looking at like an Iverson on TV trying to do all of that. You remember that Nike commercial where they do all the dribbling and then they pass the ball? So yeah. I'm thinking of all <laughs> stuff like that. And I know if I can, like, you know, I, I was faster, I was stronger, I could jump, and I, I was an athlete. But to couple mm -hmm. that with, like, the actual basketball skill, that was one thing where I was just, like, I'm, I'm not going to say not necessarily practicing the right stuff, but I was just out there, and it was just kind of like, uh, I'm learning as I go. Right, and right. for him to have that conversation with me really made me feel like, oh, man, like, I – Took, my, took it for not downplayed it a little bit for myself but when he said it I'm just like oh, okay so other people see this potential in me like I'm out here I'm having fun essentially right. like I loved the like basketball is like those t-shirts that was me I loved it that's um, life ah yeah. 20, 24 when, 7 so when he yeah no basketball is <laughs> yeah I still got the t-shirt in my room I'll be working out in it still <laughs> but um when he said that, and he came and had that conversation with me, and he was just like, yo, like, you listen, you take direction well, you don't get mad. Like, if I tell you something that is basically like, hey, you need to work on this, you don't get upset about it, you just go do it. Right. He was just like, player, coaches love players like that. And then he said, also with your skill set and your athletic ability, like, you have a lot of potential. So if you keep working on your game, you're going to go very, very far in this game and it's going to be very successful for you. So that conversation stuck with me forever. I mean, even now, just thinking in my corporate, you know, my, my career work-wise, I think about that because I feel like for an athlete, even if you stop playing your sport, the competition does not stop. You're always setting goals and expectations for yourself. Absolutely. To where you're just like, no, I can meet this goal. I can do this. Like, I'm definitely a person. When I log on for work, I mean, I'm working from home right now. I write down everything that I have to accomplish for the day. Mm -hmm. And as I accomplish them, it's a checklist. I'm checking it off. So these are goals that I've set for the day. But then there's also goals that you set in life also and goals that you set in your career that you're trying to hit. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm going to say that was probably the first time that someone spoke life into me in that mm -hmm. way that made me kind of be like oh man like I was feeling myself a little bit because like I said that was my first time playing organized basketball so I felt like I didn't know what I was doing and I'm just like I need to take direction because I'm out here kind of lost right. and when he said to me like no you're good you can do this you are good you just got to keep working at it it just I'm going to say that changed my mindset for like forever, honestly. Yeah. Oh, that's that's lit. Yeah, that is, <laughs> man, that is crazy. But um, I, I just yeah. want you to dive in deep into um, telling us about, you know, some of the adversity that you had to overcome. 
and that helped you, you know, kind of shaped you, shape your life, you know, moving forward? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, just within basketball injuries as a player. So I had an injury when I was in college. I had a concussion and I was out for a couple months. And then I had an injury when I was in high school. I had a high ankle sprain and they didn't know how long I was going to be out. But I think just that part of it so that's probably one of like an athlete's worst fear right is getting an injury your first thought or your mindset is like I want to get back out onto the court or the field or whatever as quickly as I can right right but when you get out there you're thinking to yourself and I'm gonna say that this stuff crept into my mind am I fully like healed like am I ready to go it's like kind of that self-doubt a little bit if I make a certain move, am I going to re-injure myself? Mm. Am I going to be the same when I come back? So I think all of that stuff played into my head. And I had a lot, I'm going to say, especially with college, because with a concussion, there's really not a lot that you can do. It's not like they can see something is swollen or something is broken. So it's really just like a time thing. No, you're good. All good. So with um, it adversity in my basketball career, I had two, I'm going to say major injuries from high school. Oh, no. Yeah, there was two in high school. Um, so I had a high ankle sprain when I was in high school mm-hmm. and had to sit out for like, man, I probably missed like a month of basketball. So when I finally got back onto the court, obviously you're going through that rigorous like rehab and doing all of that stuff. So I got to get my ankles taped every game because I hated wearing the ankle braces. I feel like they just limited me too much. Um, But when you get back onto the court, it's like these thoughts that you get. And I'm going to say it was a quick thing for me, but it was like, dang, am I, am I ready? Like, am I fully healed? And this is just like a quick boom, spurt of thoughts. Am I, am I fully healed? Can I get back out here and be the player that I was before? Am I going to be the same? And will I re-injure myself? So I think when you first get back out there, you might play like a little timid because I know that I did. Mm. And the way that I played, like I said, I was a slasher. I got to the basket. I could jump. I could rebound. So that's high, you know what I mean, um, percentage for me to re-injure my ankle injury. Um, But I got over that. But just honestly thinking about that and – being on the sideline for so long, watching practice, couldn't do anything at all, like nothing, um, but just watch people other than doing, you know, my rehab and ankle strengthening exercises. But I had another one, and I forgot about this one. Right before I went to went into my senior year of high school, I was playing AAU basketball, and I tore my meniscus during – the AAU season right before my senior year of high school. And I didn't know that it was torn though. So there was just like one game where it happened and the next game I tried to play, but my leg wouldn't bend. It was just kind of stuck in this motion. So I'm just like, man, but the more I moved it, the more it would like loosen up a little bit. Um, And then I just kind of sat on it, obviously, for a couple of days after that. But like my leg was messed up for the entire summer and never went Mm. to the doctor or anything. So I'm still trying to do like workouts and stuff like that. But it just hurt. So Ah, I ended up going into like this super intensive, like physical therapy type stuff where I was at this like sports medicine. They had me like jumping on trampolines and, you know, all that stuff where they have you like on one leg, you standing on like a foam block or whatever, doing all of that. Um, but I ended up having to get one of those knee braces, Mm. those big ones that you like pull on with the straps and they got Stone Cold Steve Austin. You had the Stone Cold Steve Austin? I had to get that. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I hated it. Yes. I had to wear that. I had to wear that. So I'm pretty sure that kind of, I kind of couldn't move around with that big old brace. Oh man. No, it was the worst. That was my worst injury. And I was about to talk about my um, concussion in high in college. That injury sucked also because that's something, obviously, they can't look at you and be like, oh, you're good to play. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything with that. You literally just got to sit on the side. I couldn't even sweat. Like, I was like, this is, this is driving me insane because I want to be out there. 
But with that knee injury, that changed a lot for me because I couldn't move as fast as I wanted to. I couldn't jump as fast as I wanted to. Like I still have issues in that same leg from that injury. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, hurt but so I ended up. <laughs> hurt yeah. in the oh, ah. yes. yes, yes. Like I can tell when it's about to rain. You know how people say that. Like <laughs> my, my, my knee. Yeah, yeah. Grandma used to say that. Nearly my said knees. All the time. Oh, my legs are aching. My joints is aching. It's about to storm, y'all. But yeah, no, that was that was. I ended up having surgery right before I came to Denison. So my freshman year that summer, I was just like, no, I want to be at my best, I don't want to have to wear this brace, but obviously I had to wear it a little bit after um, because of the surgery. But yeah, so I went into dentist in my freshman year, like fresh off of surgery, rehab. I was probably a little out of shape. No, I'm not a little, I was a lot out of shape because you know they send you their your packet over the summer. You got to work out. You need to be able to bench press this much. You need to be right. able to run your mile time in this. And my mile time was terrible, obviously, because I hadn't really ran right. over the summer because of my surgery. So when I got to Denison, I was pretty out of shape. But skill set wise, I was cool as far as that. Uh, but yeah, no, that injury was tough too because it definitely changed the way that I had to play. So I had to be a little bit smarter versus being like more of an athlete because, or relying on my athletic skill, my athletic ability. Me trying to cut and do all of that stuff, I might feel a sharp pain go through, ah. you know, my knee, and I'm just like, ah, let me, let me chill, let me relax. But once I finally got, you know, those muscles built up around it and got it together, that was better. But that was a tough time for sure. And I think just transitioning from high school to college basketball also, but having that injury in between, and then me not coming in as prepared as I would have liked due to that injury and the surgery that I had was definitely a tough time because like we just talked about with me coaching those younger girls, we're in a state of mind at the mm -hmm. time where we think we have things figured out. Like I already know I'm the shit. I'm coming in here. I'm about to ball on all y'all. Right. And I'm about to be starting. I'm about to be doing all this stuff. But then I have this setback that really set me back. Talk your it shit. didn't allow me to be able to, yeah, talk my shit, prepare my body the way that I wanted it to be ready for me entering my first year of college and, you know, like start my freshman year of basketball. So that was definitely a tough time and the adversity and me just really rehab. Yeah. I don't know what, what athlete likes that. I hate rehab. Hate yeah. it. I hated my physical therapist. I hate that <laughs> shit. It's terrible. It's good for you, but I hate it. I hated it. Yeah, I, I definitely do want to come back to that because because I think that's important about how you know we need to start giving respect to a lot of these pro athletes who go, like who go through these in, like injuries and how they come back because like it really impact impacts on what you can do. Like hey, right. like like right. like absolutely. Like I, like I like like I mean I think my senior year, I end up um, my junior year, I had partial tear in my in my left meniscus and in my senior year, I broke my thumb so it's like when you get these injuries and like you start to come back and he's like, all right, cool. I'm trying to dominate how I used to dominate. And then you realize you can't do the certain moves that you used to be able to do. Right. You know what I mean? With the same explosiveness. And it's just like, ah, I hate this. And then rehab is the worst. So that means shout out to all the guys who can play yeah. through injuries. Yeah. Man, cause, cause, cause it's your mindset. Definitely ain't easy. I was your mindset dealing with those injuries. Cause like Ray was saying, like you oh, were kind of timid and, you know, kind of thinking about the injuries. Was you thinking about those injuries? While, while you was playing? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it does cross your mind. Like, you just, like, just like you just don't want it to, like, you don't want to go through the experience again. Mm. Like Ray said, like, I mean, you really don't like your, like your physical therapist. If you like your physical therapist, they're doing something <laughs> wrong. Because, so like, 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 you really have to, like, really dig into your body and challenge, and challenge your body and put your body through some like, intensive pain. It's a mm -hmm. process. It's a healing process. And, and oh like, man like the like process, no you, yes. can't, you can't skip no steps when it comes to rehab mm. so like you, you're like so when uh, you get you out really there, gotta trust the process facts facts you really have to trust it and like when you get out there it's like all right i gotta figure out a new way on how to maneuver and sometimes mm -hmm. learning that new 
like that that new game that you have to put forth i mean it can be difficult so it, it can fuck with you mentally because mm. you want to win like you absolutely like, yo i want to i want to perform at the level that I, I was or even better. right 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 yeah ah man so so tell us how you got to denison so going through the injury your senior year Tell us about your recruiting process. You, like you said, you had an you, oh, man. you've had an amazing AAU career. So how was the recruiting process and how did you manage it? And it's like, what are some of the ill stories that you took from that? Man, so recruiting was interesting. I'm going to say I got like a couple smaller um, D1 looks and then a lot of D2 looks. I didn't really want to go far away from home. So me looking at Dennis and I got the letter and I thought that I could come into that situation. This is me being that 18 year old, having that ego, thinking I'm the shit. My skills are, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on point. I'm about to be balling on everybody. I thought I was going to come in and start um, a really good friend of mine. And I've known him since middle school. He was going on a recruiting visit to Denison for football. So he's just like, you should just come. They sent you a letter. They're interested. You should just come up here. You know what I mean? Talk to the coach and see what it's about. So on my recruiting visit, I actually went with another friend of mine that, and I've also known her since probably middle school because we played AAU ball together and traveled and all that stuff she was looking at Denison as well so we went on the visit and I don't even remember who they assigned us like our chaperone to but they took us to like a couple parties and stuff like that and the campus was smaller so I'm looking at the academic aspect of it also and I'm just like Denison's a good school it's smaller I could come here and I could probably play like right away so that really for me was the recruiting experience I didn't really talk to like a bunch of schools um the other schools that I was looking at I was honestly wrestling with the fact that I probably wouldn't play basketball at those schools and would just focus solely on academics so with venison I'm just like like I said it's small it's close to home I know like my mom my dad my friends my family would be able to come to the games and stuff like that I have familiarity here with my friend, um, shout out to Jerome, him, his twin sister, Amber, like we all went to, known each other since middle school. And then I had my other friend um, who play, who I played basketball with. So I was just like, it's a familiar thing. It felt comfortable. And I was just like, all right, I'm gonna go here. And after that, I definitely faced some adversity in my freshman year. Like I said, I came in thinking I'm the shit and I'm about to play. But like I just told you, I was coming off that injury. Wasn't probably in the best shape that I should have been in or could have been in due to that. But I was still hooping. So I'm going to talk my shit on that. I was ah, hooping. Like um, I was doing flex. my thing. Big flex. And, ah, getting buckets. Yeah. I mean, stopping right. cats. So stopping I just, cats. You feel me? <laughs> You know what I mean? So I just wasn't getting the recognition from the coach that I felt like I should have been getting. As far as me, like talking to the team and the upperclassmen, they're like, oh no, like, yeah, you should be playing. Cause I mean, I'm an open gym and I'm doing my thing. Like I'm hooping. I feel like I had my legs under me, not my wind. I'm going to say like my, my knee was good. <laughs> I was feeling good, but it's hard to breathe out there. As far as my conditioning. It's hard to like, breathe out there. You know what I mean? But, but I'm not going to let y'all know. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm not going to let y'all know. I'm probably running there. up and down there. the court like, dang, my chest, my chest is burning, We've but I can there. get through this. And I was hooping. So yeah, when I didn't, play or when I wasn't getting the play time that I thought I deserved it definitely put me into a little bit of a slump in my mindset wise like do I even want to go to this school anymore I could low-key transfer go somewhere else and play or just not play basketball anymore I think for an athlete that is super tough to even contemplate being like I don't want to play the sport that I have loved my entire life. And I'm, I'm 18 years old at the time, but that I have loved forever because of this one situation. And in my mindset, like I said, basketball is life. So if I'm not playing basketball here, I don't want to be here. Right. And I think that was me for like the first half of the season. And I felt like I was doing my thing. So 
the team went on a trip to California. They do a trip out of town every other season or whatever. So my coach took everybody, but I think there was six freshmen in my class. She took three of the freshmen. I was one of the ones that stayed home. So obviously I felt the way about that. And I was just like, you know what? Like, forget y'all. I don't even care. I get to go home. I'm gonna go home. We never get to go home on break. So I got to go home, hang out with my friends from high school, kick it with them, just kind of like not think about basketball kick it with at the homies. all. And that's what I needed to do. Yeah, kick it with the homies. Shout I got out to the some, homies. You know, <laughs> shout, shout out to the, the squad. Let me, the squad. let me, let me shout out who the squad, squad is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout yeah, out yeah. to Stephanie plug, Washington. Plug him in. Plug him in. I'm gonna shout him out. I'm gonna shout him out. I'm going I'm to plug them. I'm going to shout out to the winning team. That's what we call ourselves. Stephanie Washington, my dog, my best friend. Shout out to my, my home girl, Kiera Harris. That's us. We call ourselves the winning team. Um, and then my other girl, Tara Gaither, she down in Cincinnati repping, but that is the squad right there. Ah, and a bunch of other squad. people, Jerome Ray, Amber, Alicia, Stewart, um, my girl Paige, Rob Nett, like my homies still kicking with them. To this day, to, but um, to this day, <laughs> to the winning <laughs> team. Shout out to the winning team. The winning team. It's lit. It's lit. Salute. The winning team. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I got to go home and kick it with them, which I never got to do. Um, to the point where when we had to come back from like that winter break, the team got back in town. And we're supposed to re report back for practice. I didn't want to go because I'm just mm. like, no, I'm not about to play. And y'all about to have me at practice running because y'all lost every game in California. Like the team was texting us, the people who didn't get to go, they're hitting us like, man, we lost every game. And I was like, practice is about to be crazy for y'all next week. But I ain't going to be there because I'm <laughs> not coming back. I'm not doing it. <laughs> so I like um, made up some excuse and just told my coach, week. like, I'm not coming. Yeah, I'm going to see y'all next week. I'll be there. Like, I got other stuff to do. So then I got back. And I think I really, like, that break was obviously very well needed. I got to clear my mind. And then just, I kind of went into it with, like, a fuck it type attitude. I was just like, whatever. And from that point on, I just played basketball the way that I love the game. And just played the way that I wanted to play. And I mean, it was a different, it was just like a different mindset. Like, I'm not even going to say I was playing better, but I think my mind was just more clear. And I was just like, I don't even care what she says that I'm, I'm referring to the coach. Like, I know that I'm a good player. So I'm going to just play my game. To it happened to a point where we were having like our end of season, like meetings and stuff like that. She pulls me into her office and she was just like, you know what, if you would have been playing this way, all season you would have been in california with us and in my mind at right, the time on, i'm like so you was gonna bring me right yeah like don't try to play me because right. i've been playing like this and i'm thinking so you was gonna bring me to california so i could sit on a bench to watch the team lose like no i didn't want to do that if you was gonna bring right. me i need to be on the court so right. she said that to me and at that time, I was just like, whatever, like, okay, thanks. I know I've, I've been doing this. I've been doing this, like, too. Um, but yeah. in hindsight, I look back at it, and it was definitely a test, you know, to try and motivate me and try and get, I'm, I'm going to say, like, the best out of me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it worked for her on her side but you know 18 year old ray was right, like right right nah. that age yeah, you don't know right, what you're yeah. talking about i've been right. playing like this me now seasoned ray is like she was definitely trying to motivate you right. she saw what you could do because after that um i'm gonna say our relationship was pretty up and down a little shaky but mm. i stuck to my guns and i played my game so, so that is one that. thing that i like why was it so shaky like like talk to us about like because I think a lot of uh, you know fans don't understand like like athletes are you know have feelings and opinions too so it's like you need a good oh, relationship yeah, with your coach in order, sure. in order to succeed whenever you step in like whenever you step on the court or on, on the field or whatever so like tell us how tell the people how you manage that 
Yeah, man. So I'm going to say this. I think for us in our relationship, the reason why it was so shaky is because that conversation kind of set the tone. It was just like, have you, if you would have been playing like this the whole time, you'd have been there. And me thinking, like I said, I've been doing this and I'm going to continue to do this. And I'm going to say my mindset was a little bit more rebellious in the sense of I didn't buy into her game plan because I was just thinking about me and how I wanted to play basketball and how I wanted to play the game. So we butt heads a lot. Like she was a definitely a fundamental type of coach. You know what I mean? Jump stop, all of that type of stuff. And I, I wasn't doing that. I'm hitting the layup. I'm, I'm trying to hit the floaters. I'm, I'm trying to hop step. I'm, I'm crossing people over. Ah. I'm trying to block every shot that goes up. And she didn't like that. But I was just like, whatever, I'm not about to change up my game because you said no. Right. I'm going to keep doing it. So we definitely butt heads. I'm going to say we probably established like a good relationship towards the end of my junior year. I'm, I'm, I'm a just mid junior year is when we really kind of like connected and got on the same page. But I would say it was from my standpoint of just like, let me get myself on the court, right? So going back to like, I'm doing all the things that I know that I do well so that I can be in the game. And then when I'm in the game, I'm going to adjust it to my flavor and my flair. She's yeah. going to have to keep me out there because it's going to work out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think that was a lot of it. And I mean, to this day, I still, shout out to Coach Lee. I still talk to her. She has been great, obviously, for me, like, in my career. I'm going to say that as well. Like, I, I told y'all, she wrote me that letter of recommendation for the Women's Basketball Coaching Association. Um, she also recommended me to be on the Varsity D Athletic Committee at Denison. So I'm on this committee where we vote, essentially, for who's going to be in the upcoming Hall of Fame class for Denison. And that was specifically her who was just like no we need to get Ray in the mix like she needs to be on this committee I think that would be great so that's what learned a lot from her and I think shout she's also learning a lot from me because you know yeah. yeah shout out to coach Lee I think that we definitely developed a relationship from and I had like a couple personal like family issues which I think that also connected us as well she just kind of helped me through some of that stuff and was just I saw a different side of her in that side. And I really think that that's what strengthened our relationship. But like I said, even to this day, I still talk to her. We talk every once in a while. And if there's something that she sees, it's like, oh, I think Ray would be really good for this. Like, let me go ahead and plug her name in there. So yeah, I really appreciate that. But I'm a, honestly, our relationship was a little shaky for a while, but it's, it's all good. good. Now. Shout solid. out to Coach Lee, because I definitely took one of her classes. I yeah. took, uh, I took women in the sport. I mean, and whenever I used to work in the um in the oh in yeah room, I mean, she always showed me love in the hallways. I mean, I can talk to her about I'm saying, I'm saying about hoops or whatever. But yeah. she always showed me love. So shout out to Coach Lee. She probably don't remember me, but it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. You know what I mean? <laughs> shout out to Coach. Um, so Ray, man, I mean, oh, we've 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 come a long way. I mean, so your recruiting process, you have played against some of the best. You know, some folks are still playing in the WNBA. I mean, but what we didn't get into was, uh, I mean, w- w- what we kind of want to really know is like, as a, as a leader on the, on these teams, what was your role? Oh, so like, how did you lead the team? my role? Yep. My role. Okay. I think I definitely was one. I wasn't like a super vocal leader until I got comfortable. Um, at Denison, I got, I was captain my junior and senior year, and I definitely think I was just one that kind of led by example. Like I told you guys, I was one of the ones who would hold my teammates accountable. So if I see you not like, I know you can get that ball. Why didn't you hustle for it? I was definitely going to be one of the ones to call you out and I could talk to people. We all, and I learned this back from my coach, Chris Blackwell, shout out to him again. KYP, which is know your personnel. You know Ooh. what I mean? You know Say that one to more to Say that one more time, right? KYP. Know your personnel. Know your personnel. KYP. KYP. 
you like know it. how to talk to specific teammates. You know what I mean? Like, I know there were some teammates that I could talk to and just be like, yo, what the hell are you doing? You need to go after that. And then other ones, you got to talk to a little bit more like, hey, like, no, you got it. Be more encouraging to mm. them. You know what I mean? And then I also know if I got, you know, homegrown on the right, she shoots in the corner. That's her spot. I'm going to get her the ball. So just kind of, I think knowing my teammates like that, building those personal relationships, I was definitely one who tried to connect with everybody on like an individual level. Um, I definitely think that builds like chemistry and that just team camaraderie. So that was one thing that I think my teammates respected from me and also my honesty and just how I would go about the game and even just me in practice and stuff like that. And I mean, they probably laughed at me too because I had like, in my uh-huh. earlier days, a bit of an uh-huh. attitude and my eyes would roll a little bit. So they would always watch me or, you know, it's like that funny moment and there's the facial one person in the be, room, you know, yes, the facial expressions, but there's that funny moment that happens. You know, there's that one person you can make eye contact with. And if you look at them, you're going to laugh. I yeah. was that person. So I think that was <laughs> another thing. Like my teammates just, we just connected and, I think they related to me. I can relate to them or just find something that we could connect with. And I knew them, like I knew how to play to everybody's skill set or not even skill set, but just like I knew what everybody could do well. Mm-hmm. And I would really like really bo- boast them to talk they shit. Like, no, you be hitting that shot, girl. You need to hit that. Shoot that again. And I can give you an example. My coach we do stuff to test people and practice all the time. Right. So when we would play, we would scrimmage, it'd be like the red team and the white team were like the top two teams in practice. I'm going to say red was probably like the top team in practice. So those are all the starters. And you got the white team, then you got the blue team and then you got the gray shirts. And that means you don't got no jersey. Ah, so mm-hmm. we just play it. So one day she took, she decided to mix it up. Right. And she puts me and this other girl, she was good on like the third, third or fourth squad trying to test us and stuff. So I'm just like, okay, cool, bet. Like, we got it, we good. So I talked to my team and I'm just like, yo, she trying to play us y'all and we ain't about to go out like this. So let's get it. When I tell you, it was just like a, you know, it's like whoever stays on scores, that's how we did it. We stayed on the court. Ah. the entire time so i'm like ah, hold this light flex light work it. i'm light like work, she tr- mm. right work. so i'm like she oh, she yeah. was trying to test us to see how we, we how we would respond to it and in that it definitely helped both because i mean I, the players who are in like the, the blue shirts and the gray shirt they're not playing as much they're not getting a lot of play time but when, once you mix things up and you get that chemistry going and everything's, you know what I mean, good, it's flowing correctly, these players are hyped. They got confidence that they can do the things that they know that they can do, you know what I mean, versus if you sit on the bench the entire game and there's all these people playing in front of you, you're probably thinking to yourself, or you could be like, damn, she thinks that these players are better than me or they're going to be better in these situations. But in that moment – even if it was just for like 20 minutes of a, a two hour practice, you got to showcase what you could do and you did it very well. And you succeeded at it and we won. So that was like one of the dope. I'm going to say that was probably one of the dopest practices ever. Ah, it, it was lit. It was lit. It just made me feel good. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I just had a chip on my shoulder because I felt like she was trying to play me. Um, and I felt like she was trying to play us as a collective. So it was just like, hey, y'all, we're about to show her and them that we could beat these starters. And, and we did it. So. That's so, it. so speaking of, I mean, of, um, you know, your game and all that stuff that you had to endure during um, your time playing basketball. So who were some of the players that you respected playing against and why? Oh man! Because um, I know there was some some, some players I was trying to turn trying to test you right. Oh no, you're right. That that's a fact. I'm gonna say, which <laughs> is so shit. funny because she's like, shit. 
one of my really good friends now when um I was in I want was I in high school middle school we were playing so it was my all Ohio team versus this Dayton team and we would play against them all the time so me and her went up against each other and the game was just intense the entire game like we probably our teams almost fought each other wow me and her were in the post. I like this. I like the so sound of this story four. already. I'm playing four. We going hard. You know, how you just got the ball. You don't. You can't do this no more. It's a, you, that's no, a technical. No. You can't do that no more. It's intentional. You know, flagrant, whatever. But we was doing that back then. So she caught me in the eye. I caught her hey. back. I, I still have a scar on my shoulder from where she scratched me. The more in the one. game and I mean yeah. it's funny now because we joke about it but like back then it was like yo we about to fight and there was <laughs> one play where a girl on their team who's probably like the nicest person ever right had a clip I mean like I'm gonna I'm a compare her to Steph Curry because she had the clip like anywhere ah, she just shoot and release was quick hitting so she goes in for a layup and I think I told y'all this earlier I'm trying to block every shot that goes up because I just felt like I could no you know easy I mean? buckets it's so physical I, in here it's physical in here. hey ah you gonna feel me to, shout out to my my coach Chris Blackwell on this because I was on his team at the time his motto was no free layups oh you're man. not getting to the lane for free you're not you're not getting to the lane untouched you're not it's not happening ah no hold that ah so let me see what you made though let me see what that man. texture made though yo <laughs> <laughs> I, this girl goes up for a layup and it wasn't even, I mean, I'm just in the middle. I felt the shit out of her. Like she hit the ground hard and I'm just like, oh man. So their team was about to get up and come at me. I'm not a bad, you know, I'm not, I'm not a bad sport. I'm not a sore loser. So I'm just like, damn, I really injured her. Like, oh, you this took is her me. Out, my right? adrenaline's pumping from the game. So I, I did take her out. <laughs> My adrenaline is pumping in the game. So I'm trying to like swat everything and she goes up and just falls to the ground. So I'm just like, damn, like she might be hurt. So I go over and I'm asking like, are you okay? And I try to help her up. So fast forward to literally two years later, I end up playing with that team that we played against. Like I was on their team. So how they And when I you? got to meet them, oh so man, they was like, yo. <laughs> We was about to fight you <laughs> that game because you, you took our homegirl out. We were we were about to fight you, and I said, "Catch me outside." I said, "I, yo, yes, catch me out exactly." <laughs> they was like, "We was about to fight you. We wanted to fight you. We thought it was about to be on, but they was like, you ain't helped her up." So we we knew it was like cool, and even after the game, you know, we shake hands and do all of that stuff. But when we talked about it later, they was like, "Yeah, we was we was about to fight. It was about to be a brawl." And I was just like, "Well, I guess it was gonna be a brawl then, because I couldn't, yeah, I, couldn't right. I couldn't back down from it. You know right. what I mean? Ah. You can't tell me it was about to be me up, and I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. No, I mean it was it was gonna be a brawl. You know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Shorty caught that smoke. Don't come in my lane, Shorty. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> no, that's yeah, it. was that that's... like the Kimbe Matumbo. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Swatted, but yeah, no. I, oh. I felt bad because she got hurt, but it was all good after that. That's hilarious, y'all. No, the, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> oh, man. So, oh, man. So, like, I, uh, you know, Ray, like we covered a lot, man, and and, and we definitely want to play. Before we go to, I'm saying, transition to more current stuff, man. Right now, from your perspective, from playing, the coaching, the scouting, what is the state of women's basketball now? And as fans, as oh, man. as as folks that just enjoy athletes, you know, like their journeys. How can podcasts like you know, like this one, help grow the game of basketball? Man, I really think when we started off, I said like the representation matters. That is so huge. And I'm going to say that I think this pandemic definitely shed a light on just sports in a different way, period. Mm -hmm. But just having kind of like, and I, like I said, I'm super appreciative that you guys are having me on your platform and 
talk about my story. I mean, like I've done so many things just because of basketball. And there are so many other women out there that have a same similar story or just a journey that's super dope that people need to hear. And, you know, for them to be able to tell their stories, like I had a super crazy, and just sharing it, you know what I mean? Just sharing your story and sharing what your passion is and sharing what you want to do with somebody can get you linked or connected to something that you may want to do in the future or that you want to do right now. And that, that happened to me. So I was working in retail at the time, retail marketing. I met a girl at my old job. She used to work for the NCAA. So she was just like, I'm working on a contract for the NCAA. We're about to have, and this was when the tournament was in Columbus, Ohio, which was even dope, hometown. You know what I mean? Shout out to Columbus, uh-huh. Ohio, specifically, um, and just <laughs> Ohio. Um, she was like, we're doing a contract with the NCAA. I'm about to put on this program for the tournament. And it was be called Beyond the Baseline. So what it was, was a bunch of different like workshops and different informational pieces that women could go to and it was like a forum we're talking we're doing all this other stuff and just kind of giving women or young women the tips and tricks of the trade to just get themselves acclimated but just seeing all these women in powerful places was super dope for those athletes as well like one specific thing that I worked on was the branding brunch so and it was really just talking about your brand, kind of like what we're doing here. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm talking my shit, but when you talk yeah. your shit, you are talking about your brand. So mm-hmm. we had people come in, um, Kim Blackwell, she's the CEO of the PM, uh, PMM agency, I believe. And at the time I was working at Justice. So our CMO came, her name was Sarah Turbo. They came in and kind of just shared their story, but it's these women in powerful places. Maria Taylor was the MC for that brunch so it was just super dope to even be able to put that on and I think that was super helpful but I also just like I said sharing your story so these five women who are in you know very powerful places within their companies they're either like the owner or they're you know super high up in their companies and they're just sharing their stories and their journeys I'm even looking at it myself and I put the program together like damn you are Mm -hmm. really doing a thing, ma'am. Like, let Mm -hmm. me talk to you so I can get that information and soak that in. You could be someone like a mentor for me and maybe connect me to somebody who can help me get on the path that I'm going to. So I think that's super important. And I love the spotlight that's on women's basketball now. I really think a lot of it is exposure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, there's not there wasn't a lot of talk of women's basketball when I was playing I knew because I was playing so that was something that I was searching for but I think if there's more of a spotlight you're shining it on these players it can go super far and it could be very successful like we've seen the spike in you know people tuning into WNBA games and the NCAA tournament and just what it did and I know you I'm sure you guys saw like the discrepancies between the men and the women's weight rooms and what they what they were provided it was disgraceful the NCAA need to get their act together NCAA is terrible it's crazy so much money so the even the statement that they came out with with like about the space I was so I don't remember the girl's name but I know she played for Oregon how she exposed it social media is like the biggest tool and i feel like that is one of the things that's shining like a super bright light on wnba players you know what i mean wnba players are just female athletes in general right or women athletes sorry excuse me in general where they're able to share their experiences and what they're doing and they are seen so now you got other you know young women coming up and they see these athletes like oh i could do that too I have this social media presence, so people are watching it now because of me, but because of other players too. Like we've known like the Candace Parkers, but there's so right. many other great players, you know what I mean? Just like across the board. Like I, I'm sure you guys have seen, I think Paige Bukers. I always okay, can never say her name play right. Of the, play of the year. Oh, NCAA better. play of the year. Shoot. Hooper. Hooper. Crazy. Hooper. So, but but you know but, what but, I mean? but 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 um, 
the young lady from um, Arizona just went number three in the, in the WNBA draft. She was a, a speedy guard. She was oh, yeah. giving, giving them work. Oh, she was Hoover. giving them work. Harry, Harry. Yup. Yeah. And then the young lady from um, South Carolina. I'm oh. drawing a blank on her name right now. But she's from Ohio. She went to school up in Toledo oh. in crazy game. Hooper. So I'm just saying stuff like that, just getting that exposure. And I really feel like a big part of the reason why the women's game is different now and it's being more seen is because of social media. I'm not even going to say it's because of major like cable or whatever, you know what I mean? Like ESPN or anything right. like that. It's literally because of social media. That's my opinion. So I think that you really just got to give it a chance. They're not giving yeah. them that opportunity to shine and get out there. And that's why I brought up the discrepancy with um, the weight room stuff. Like that was ridiculous and everybody could see it, but you see how them putting that on social media, there was an immediate response. Right. We can get you guys that equipment. I saw brands. So like big sporting goods and there was another sporting goods store. I think that was local to the area was just like, we have all this equipment loaded up on the truck. Just let us know where and when we need to deliver it right. so that we can get it. But you have the NCAA who is this literally like nonprofit, but yeah. they got bank. We all right. know that. Yep. Right. And you gave them this weight rack. I have that weight rack in my closet right now. Like that's <laughs> ridiculous. And you had that for an entire tournament. It was crazy. So just even the exposure from that post alone just sparked a media frenzy. And now you got NBA players talking about it. And you have players just across the sports world from all over so, so everybody was talking about it and it was just like a thing so i'm saying i really just feel like they really just got to give it a chance and right. let people know you know this is out there i feel like the wnba has done a good job especially we see like the social justice po and they've always been like that mm. but they're they've been getting it's like give them their flowers while they're here now because yeah. they've been doing this stuff. It's popular now to be doing all of that and talking about it and stuff like that. But the WNBA has been light years ahead of a lot of these other leagues and things like that in talking about stuff like that. So it's really just like that representation matters, showing them, facts, facts. giving them the chance to, you know what I mean, shine. That's really what it is. They really got to invest more time and money into that. And I, I guarantee you it would be a great, a great outcome. Yeah. So Ray, we almost out of here. I mean, we covered a lot. We covered your journey up to this point. I mean, we're going to let people know they can only get this right now. Your oh, yeah. journey on the Talk <laughs> Shit Sports Podcast. We got to keep, I got to keep hitting people over the head with that. I mean, come, like really come and lock in with us. Cause like a lot of these, I mean, we have some amazing guests. We have some amazing stories. Who are some of some of the you know the world's you know amazing athletes. So this is important to come in and lock in with us. Uh, but I think this is a good pivot now that we're talking about the WNBA and just you know how the game has changed. Um, I guess for you, how do you how do you feel about you know players now like player mobility and folks taking more agency over their careers? So like the LeBrons, the KDs. I mean. Uh, or the Kyries, how do you feel about these players switching teams to go, you know, chase championships? This is such a funny question because I have this conversation with my best friend's husband often. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Tegan Washington. That's my guy. Um, Salute. I'm going to say this, and I'm probably biased. I love LeBron James. He is my favorite player. The way he has transcended the game and his impact, not even on the court, but out, outside of basketball has been amazing, right? So I'm going to be biased. And I'm also an Ohio native. Um, uh, gonna, so I was, him leaving. <laughs> <laughs> if he wasn't him, from Ohio, would you be a fan? Him. Uh, yeah, I would still be a fan. Okay. I think I'm a I'm a bigger fan because he's from Ohio. Gotcha. He made me like the Cleveland Cavaliers. I wasn't paying attention to them until I'm not lying. I'm that's a lie. I was paying attention to them when Kyrie was there. No, that's true. I was paying attention to them when Kyrie was there. But when LeBron came, I was tuned in. All right, because I'm like, okay, he about to put us. You know, we got the Buckeyes, but you know, now we got Cleveland. 
So I respect and I appreciate that athletes are taking their careers into their own hands. I think that's super important because my, like I said, I have this conversation with my best friend's husband all the time. And honestly, just seeing like some of the recent moves and how players are finding out that they're getting traded via social media versus like, Dang, you can't call me into the office and have a conversation with me and let me know like, hey, you know, it's just not working out. We about to send you out to Sacramento or wherever. But I find out at halftime that I'm being traded. Like right. that's crazy to me. It's insane. So from that aspect, I respect that players are able to take their career into their own hands and make the decisions themselves because at the end of the day, it is their process. You know what I mean? The organization is going to do what's best for the organization and the player should do what is best for the player. So in LeBron's case, when he left Cleveland and went to Miami, it broke my heart and I could not be a fan, but I was cheering for LeBron. I just was like, man, this hurts. This hurts. But I understood what he was doing. I got it. Um, with the KD Harden. situation, Harden and KD, yeah. I'm gonna I'm touch on KD first. With KD, he was on a good team. Westbrook, Harden. I mean, I know Harden ended up leaving, but like that team was good. That Oklahoma City Thunder team was good. Serge Ibaka, like they were nice. And the only reason why I had an issue with KD's move is because they, like, y'all almost beat Golden State. Right, right. Y'all were up on them in that series. Was it 3-0? Was it 3-0? 3-1. 3-1. 3-1. Yes. It, it was it was 3-1. You guys were up on them in that series, and you decided to leave your team to go join them so it was like more so if you can't beat them join them which I do not like that phrase I think it's whack like I think the competitiveness in me is just kind of like now nah, we about to beat y'all I'm right. gonna figure out how to beat you about guys to, here yeah. but I'm not gonna join your team and with that move it was just like what I think that was when they went what was it 72 and whatever like the team was so good there was they didn't need they did not need KD to join that team for them to be better. They were already good before he got there. He definitely made them great, but he didn't need to join that. It, it wasn't like for me how, you know, when LeBron went down to Miami, they weren't that Warriors team, that caliber of talent. They were not that team. So when he went down there, I mean, obviously Bosch and D-Wade is already there. So they form a good team, but – Hall of Famers. The Warriors Hall of were, nice. they were the best. They were the best team in the league. The Warriors yeah. were the best team in the league. And KD, you had an edge on them. And then you went to go join them. That was the only reason why, just as an athlete in a competitive mindset, I just was like, mm, I thought that was a whack move. And with Harden, I understand him not wanting to be in Houston. I just didn't like the way that he went about it. But I, I mean, get it. He didn't he have want to have. He didn't, have way. he didn't have no other way to, to um, I guess, re- I mean, because if he played and kept quiet, I think they would have kept him. I I think so, too. And I mean, I mean, I mean, they gave him the bag. So you're the franchise yeah. player. They should be doing stuff to make you happy and build teams. Up, you know what I mean? They're building the team around you. To me, in my personal opinion, James Harden is a great player. He's one of the best offensive players, like, ever. Ever, like, ever. I don't know how he gets ever. to the bucket so easily. Don't put some respect on that man's name. And there's all this stuff. But let me tell you something. If we look back to his OKC days in the playoffs, and I'm going to even say at Houston in the playoffs, he kind of disappears a little bit. So he definitely needs an extra push. So I totally get that. What I'm going to say is I respect the player's ability and um, the freedom that they have to take over their careers. I think they absolutely earn that right. Like I said, the organization is not loyal to anybody, so the right. players should be loyal to themselves. But some of the moves I don't respect yeah. as much. Right. Some of, some of, some of the moves are definitely questionable. Like the KD – 
Hey, KD to um, Golden State, I definitely agree. Because as a competitor, you want to face the best. You want to go against a team, you know, the best of the best. So if the team, if you lost the series and you was up 3-1, nah, we're going to run that shit back. We're going to come with the same team, right. with that same energy, and we're going to whoop your ass next year. We're not going to, I'm not going to join you. I'm trying to beat you. So exactly as a competitor i understand that but i'm 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 all for the players taking control of their careers because it's at the end of the day these organizations like like you just said they're going to trade you at 12 o'clock at night and not call you and not call you to the office or anything like that they're going to send you a text not even send you a text you're going to find out through espn and a little tick in the bottom ray just got traded to right um Ohio, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And it's like you right. you're with the homies, with, with the winning team, you're chilling with the winning team and they're looking at it and they're like, right, you just got traded. <laughs> you just got traded. You in the group chat. Get, you, exactly. you, know, you find right. out in your group chat. <laughs> right, right. Like that's just great. Yeah, you find it, or you find it out on Twitter because you got fans trolling you like, dang, bro, they just let you go. <laughs> and like, I think that, aspect of it is so trash and to me it's pretty unprofessional so like I said I'm I'm for it I love it and I love that the player is able to take control of their career and they're able to do things but I do I'm not gonna say there's a right or wrong way to go about it but there are certain ways that I respect a little bit more right right but I respect their right to choose and take control over their careers like I 100% that's all we need to know you know what I mean ah she's She's pro player, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, so right, we got. Oh yeah, for sure, pro <laughs> player. I'm not. <laughs> no, fuck the organization. Ah, I'm not. No. So Ray, we got two more questions. They for wild. You. We got two more questions for you, and then we're gonna get out of here because uh, we covered a lot today. So right now, there's 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 a big movement going on, especially with the social justice movement, and and now more HBCUs and more you know pro athletes or former athletes and. Just the top, you know, talent around the country, around the world, are considering AAUs for their for their sports journey. I mean, I mean HBCUs for their sports journey. So, like, mm-hmm. how do you how do you feel about that? Like, what is your opinion on now that HBCUs are, are are attracting the 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 top athletes that usually go to like the Dukes, the North Carolinas, the uh, Notre Dame's, the Louisville's, and all that sort. I love it. I'm all for it. 100% for it. It's kind of the same thing that I said about, you know what I mean, like women's basketball and giving that them that exposure. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing for these HBCU colleges. You know what I mean? They're not getting the exposure that a Duke or an Ohio State or a Gonzaga is getting because they're getting all these top players and getting all this money because they bring in so much revenue. But these HBCU schools are not getting that opportunity. So the more that we get these top prospects that are going to go to these HBCUs, they have no, you're going to tune in. You know what I mean? So if we'll say like Jalen Suggs went to an HBCU, people are going to be tuned in because you want to see him play. So that's going to give exposure to all the other players on Mm -hmm. the team. It's going to give exposure to the school. It's going to give exposure to their opponents, just like that. If LeBron James' son comes out and say that he's going to um, an HBCU college, that's going to be huge, right? Mm -hmm. People are going to be tuned in. So it's going to give them the opportunity to flourish, which I don't think, like I said, and with the women's game as well, that they haven't been given a fair shot to flourish. So I love it. I'm all for it. I love that these athletes are – trying to take different lanes and taking routes and it's it's I mean it's like what we just talked about they're taking control of their career and right. their story and their journey you know what I mean so I'm all for it I love it during your recruiting process just to build off that during your like, recruiting process do you think uh if you were if you ever got if you got an offer from an HBCU you would like considered it a hundred percent I did not have the exposure to HBCUs like it, I'm, a, I'm and then I don't even think that the exposure now is that great, but it was not great at all when I was going through my recruiting process. But 100 percent, I mean, just being around my people, being around the game, game of basketball, and I, I think it would have been great. I mean, yeah, no, I 100 percent would have taken that into consideration and 
taking it seriously, but I feel like um, HBCU schools get a lot of flack for no particular reason. It's just people don't really know like a lot about it. And like I said, they're starting to get a little bit more exposure now. I mean, um, ESPN on first take, which I watched that like every morning did like their HBCU week and they exposed a different school every single week, which I feel like a lot of people don't even know about those yeah. schools. Yeah, right. Steve, so, Stephen A. Smith's um, that's a Stephen A. Smith alum. alum. Yeah, Winston-Salem. He went to Winston-Salem yeah. State. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, just even that, like, you know, Tennessee State University, all of that stuff, like mm-hmm. people don't have it. And I knew about Tennessee because I had a friend who went there. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like, I didn't have a lot of exposure to what HBCU colleges were. And when you're in your, I'm not even going to say recruiting process, but when you're in high school and you're talking to your counselors and stuff, they're not pushing for those schools. Not at my high school, they weren't. Right, if right. they're saying what schools are you looking at, those weren't the ones that were coming up on the list. So, right. no, I definitely think, like I said, it's it's the same thing with just like the exposure type of thing if I would have known more about it I could have done a little bit more research you know what I mean to even dive into it but if I was exposed to it more 100% I look back on it I know a couple girls that I played with went to left larger schools to go to or big name schools I'm not even gonna say larger to go to an HBCU and play basketball Mm. lit lit wow some of the HBCUs got some of the most you know just best talent in the world especially i know track for I mean, sure a lot of football players come out baseball players like like we need to really start considering these uh, schools and universities it's right amazing. i mean shout it's out to 100 percent to eddie george um he he's about to be a coach at hbcu master peace son just committed to um hbcu so i saw that they're doing yeah, that yeah thing. yeah Deion sanders at jackson state yeah. university oh, you know what i mean i mean the goal that's what i'm saying it is it's really it's about like the opportunity give them the opportunity to shine because there's so many great athletes right that right. just haven't gotten that an opportunity to showcase their we'll say talents on a large stage because their school is kind of put off to the wayside just because of whatever category it falls into which is not fair but i think now we're in a time where everybody's calling bullshit on that or it's just a spotlight where people feel more pressure to give shine to these schools which in any facet I'm for it because it's giving them that exposure and they can showcase like no we've been here so I mean for a lot of people it's gonna be like oh man I didn't know this school was that good and they just like no we've been here we 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 do this Right, right let us talk our shit give us the platform the exposure and the opportunity for us to talk our shit and show y'all what we not only what we can do, but what we've been doing for years. You Big just facts. weren't paying attention. Big but facts. now we're here. Big facts all the way. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Um, so uh, uh, we're going to get you out of here because because uh, because we can we can obviously as athletes, we can literally go all night, night and just right. talk about everything. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, this one is is is. It's probably just a little bit more, you know, in, in tune with what you want your legacy to be. Um, so what is it? What is something for younger athletes that I, I, I before I get to that, there's one, there's, there's one thing I wanted to touch on was uh, your love and, and, and support of Nike. So right now, I mean, oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the, the Nike brand and just and just being an athlete as a woman, just your whole experience from you know when you were in Pee Wee until now, how has this shaped you? And this brand, how you like you pretty much have grown up with this brand. What is it about Nike, um, and what is it that you would want to you know uh, you know? We're definitely going to speak into existence. You're going to work for Nike one day. I know we talked about that in our conversation. I appreciate prior. that. So yeah. you know I mean, we did. yes. What yes? What will you be doing for Nike, and why will you be doing it? Oh, man. So listen, one thing about Nike, I've always just loved, obviously, like the design of the shoe and stuff like that. And I'm low-key sorry at Nike because (laughs) they're definitely a fashion forward brand, right? So 
they're always doing things to me. They're, they're always the leader of the pack. They're running the shoe industry. There's other, obviously, up and coming. So Under Armour got Steph, you know, Puma has all these newer, younger athletes. So LaMelo Ball, um, who is it? Kuzma. They're all signed with those. Oof. But like Nike is still reigning king, Oof. right? Oof. Or queen. Me- Melo's my rookie of the year, so, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to plug that. Melo's my rookie of the year. Call him. <laughs> Uh, he's hey Melo's nice Melo's nice I just saw that he might be cleared to come back and play so I'm he's coming he's coming back and he's dropping 40 on cat's head he's coming back with a vengeance (laughs) (laughs) I don't I don't disagree I don't disagree with that I don't disagree with that um looking good out there when I was younger who else is looking good would you say um Anthony Edwards man now let me now that that's a bad man right there let me let me with my Stephen A. That's a bad yeah. one, okay. I know y'all seen that. Dunk. I know y'all seen that. I mean dunks. Don't, don't but you know it. which one I'm talking about. He falls it. He, he, he falls 100%. It. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He is nice. Yeah, he, he's good. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't watch a lot of college basketball last season. So when he got because Anthony Edwards was, was the number one pick, right? All right, number one pick, yep, out of Georgia. So like his his interviews and stuff, I'm just laughing. But when I saw this man play, I said, "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah he nice. I get it. I see it." Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Anthony, yeah, he's nice. Um, but with Nike, always all all I wore Nike. Like if the team gave me the opportunity to pick out our jerseys, which I, I'm pretty sure I did in high school when we got new jerseys, I was like, "We're getting Nike. This is what it's gonna look like. We need these socks. Everybody got to get black socks with the white swoosh." They didn't have all the colors back then with like the red and all of that stuff. So I was so yeah. salty when that came about because that was me back then. Like, man, I wish they had this. My AAU team could have it. Uh, we would be like, you know what I mean? Look good, feel good. Like we look good, so we about to come on the court. And Ray was Ray was y'all. Ray was the drip coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the team drip coordinator. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love, I love that stuff. I used to like draw in my notebook and just like, no, if Nike made these socks, they should have this and it should be this color and they just need to have it for it. Cause you know, they would come out with the team shoes every year. I get the East Bay book every month. So I'm looking like, okay, y'all, this is going to be the team shoe. If you don't want to get this one, you need to get this one in this colorway. So, but it was always Nike. I never strayed away from that. Um, I think Nike was a brand for me, especially now with their marketing and how they're just so with the times and their yeah. message is always like spot on, at least to me. Um, and they're very innovative brand. So I like that as well. And just the message to women in general and how they have like all of this stuff that is specifically for women. Obviously there's a bunch of units stuff sex out there as well, but I felt like specifically Nike was one of the ones that strongly made a push and like not necessarily pick the lane, but like we got more than one lane. You know what I mean? We can make this and drive this this way. So having top athletes like Serena Williams, which I said is one of my favorites and Allison Felix, who was with the brand, but she's no longer with Nike right now, but just getting all those type of athletes. And like I said, representation matters. So You got track athletes, you got basketball athletes, you got tennis athletes that are rocking this brand and they're making this message specifically for you. Just like their marketing, the commercials that they've been doing, um, it's just been crazy. So it's all like super inspiring to me. And that's the type of stuff that I like as far as like that marketing aspect. And how can you get somebody to buy into your brand and to buy into what you're selling and not even buy into it, but just believe it. So like, Nike, one of their slogans and one of their main ones is like, if you have a body, you are an athlete. Mm. And I love that. And it just do it. It's so simple. Also, it's like, just do it. And you literally can say that after anything. Right. You know what I mean? Facts, like, facts. I'm gonna apply for this job. Just do yeah, it. I'm gonna have to go for a run. Just do it. You know what I mean? So stuff like that. But that's why Nike speaks to me. And that's why I have such a love for the brand. Like everything Nike, I probably have a couple of Adidas shoes. I mean, yeah, Nike, I, I like we, you know, Adidas out. In Adidas, I'm, 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 like I'm I feel into that because of 
I'm, Sorry, I'm, what were you saying? Go ahead. No, nah, I said you gotta throw those Adidas out, man. I'm a Nike head, man. I, I don't do no three stripes, <laughs> just straight night, just straight checks. <laughs> yeah, oh, all of that. P Y R. I mean, I'm in little Yeezys and stuff like that. I got those, but yeah, that, those that's out. it. I've never get... throw them out. Oh, I can't throw them. Out. I might have to sell them, but I can't throw them out. Uh, yeah, yeah, sell them, sell them, sell them, sell them. Yeah, we we don't we don't. Yeah, <laughs> see, I gotta oh, I gotta get I gotta get a return on my investment. You doing? You talking about the Yeezys? Wait, do what? Them. Sorry. You got the Yeezys with Nike. Oh yeah, sell my Yeezys. Oh, okay, sell okay. My Yeezys. You got the Adidas ones. See, if they're the, the Nike ones, you keep those. Those those are classics. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Oh, I would never sell those. Those oh. are going crazy right now. Resell? No, wouldn't sell them. But yeah, my Adidas ones. Yes. <laughs> all right, yo, we got the brands. We got it in, man. Last question we always ask all our guests. You already know what it is, and I think we already know. But we want to just. I want you to tell the people why, Ray. You know, Brady, MJ, LeBron, Serena, Mayweather, Tiger Woods, Muhammad Ali, Walter Payton, Diana Taurasi, Cheryl Swoops. Who is your GOAT? Who's the greatest of all time, no matter what sport? Oh, man. Who's your GOAT? I knew you were about to say this. Yep. One, just one person? You got your one. Who you riding with? Oh, man. I knew you was going to do this to me. All right. So... <laughs> I gotta put this because I already said it. Y'all know I love y'all know I love LeBron. I love LeBron and Serena is my favorite, but let me tell you the GOAT is Michael Jordan. He is the GOAT. Michael mm-hmm. Jordan is the GOAT. Yeah, and I hey. feel like people know that now. I mean, like they knew it, right? But they know it now. After watching the last dance, and I'm just watching how this man like transformed his body, transformed his game and his competitive spirit and just his mindset and how he really could go into a game and was just like, you said something to me crazy the last game, so I'm going after Ah. You. This is for you. Like, it would just use any type of thing to motivate him and how he was going to attack that game. And I don't think that we've seen anybody as competitive as him. I'm going to say Kobe, obviously. Um, Yo, you know what it is. Yeah. See the man behind me. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Man. Shout out to Kobe, man. Kobe the Bean. But yeah, but, MJ, no. MJ. There would never be another MJ for sure. It's just that it's just it was just different. It was just and then just hearing all the people, everybody who like played with him or against him talk about him and like how he was. I was just like, yo, that is like I didn't know any of those. So I think it's dope, super dope when they do documentaries like that. And you get to hear like those personal stories and stuff like that just behind the game. So like the flu game, hearing like the story behind that, and you know, Michael. Jordan obviously going through injuries and his type of adversity, but just him picking out like the smallest thing to be like, oh, you you clapped your hands at me the last game. I'm coming for you this game. I'm, I got 50 on your head. You know what I mean? And then just how dominant he was grown men. in the game. And grown, I felt grown, like grown, he was one. Grown men. Grown men who thought they were the best. Right. They and, called him the best. And stopped so many players. Stop so many players, Hall of Fame players, from winning a championship. Right. Just solely him. Thanks. And you left one game to go play baseball and then came back it, to run. win, a, you know, a couple more championships. I was just like, this is Look insane. Back. It's crazy. So, Michael Jordan. It's the greatest. I think it's yes, the greatest. I have to af- say that. It's the greatest athletic story journey that we've probably ever seen. Like, yeah. Just, just the way, Absolutely. like, just the way that, I mean, just channeling that mindset. Like, I'm going to go play, play baseball. I'm kind of bored with it. It's not bringing, basketball's not bringing me any joy. But when I come back, I'm going to bust y'all ass as soon as I get in shape. Right. Huh? Oh, man. Right. What? He like, I'm going to set this down for a little bit, but I'll be back. I might not be back, but I'm going to come back. He came back and just was, like, busting everybody's ass. I was like, what the? This is crazy. Right. Like, I rewatched The Last Dance every once in a while just because yeah like, this was so insane. yeah it's yeah. necessary it was, it was crazy. it's yeah. necessary it's yeah cultural. it's for the culture like ah yeah, uh, i watched it three times <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't yes. even count the, the amount of times i watched it i can't even count i mean yeah. it's just that, 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 like, mind, that was great 
Yeah, that mind. He birthed that mindset that I don't think without MJ's mindset, there wouldn't be no Kobe. There wouldn't be no Derek Jeter. There wouldn't be no um, Tom Brady because that mindset is just like separated him from everybody else. And you can see Kobe. 100%. I agree. Kobe with five. Derek Jeter, I think he has, I, I believe he has like six rings or five along he's on, along that along those along that line Brady with seven so it's just that mindset like these cats went into like training camp like yo I'm not being I'm, I'm here to I'm here to win I don't know I don't know what you're here for but I'm here to, <laughs> I'm win. Here to win I'm here to win yes that is different it's different and you don't even see like a lot of I'm gonna say just watching the NBA there's not a lot of players that have that mindset I felt like there was one and I love Russell Westbrook he's probably one of my favorite active players but he kind of just has like that dog mentality in him like oh no I'm about to get mine and I mean what was it the year where he won um MVP and was averaging a triple double and like OKC solely got to the playoffs just because of him I was just like this man is a dog so he has that put some respect on Russell's name Put some respect, Put on, some respect on his name. Russell right, Westbrook man. is nice. They be talking shit about him. Man, that shit. man is that's a bad man. Okay. Steve, He's Stephen nice. A the most. Stephen A be talking mm-hmm. mad smoke about Russ. Like, come on, y'all. He but, does. Like, and he needs to chill because like, cause, 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 like, bro, Brody will pull to, up. Brody will pull up. <laughs> yes, yes. Russ went to the Wizards and the Wizards was bad before he got there. Bradley Bill need to go too. He needs to get mm-hmm. himself into yeah. a better situation. Russ need to go too. I mean, it's just like all of that. But right. no, he to me of uh, like current active mm-hmm. players as far as mindset and that competitiveness and I love his post game interviews. He's hilarious to me. Is one of like those closest ones to like that has like that Kobe Jordan mindset, in my right. opinion. Right, right. Now he does. He definitely does. No, that's lit. That's lit. Oh man. Yeah, we covered a lot, man. Ray. Yeah. Ray. You Ray. Blessed. Ray. Yo, you just oh, blessed. Man. You blessed the Talking Shit Sports Podcast tonight. Oh man. Thank you. We gonna put some. some we gonna. I appreciate we, we y'all gonna, having we, me. We gonna put some respect <laughs> on your name. <laughs> Your hey. Hall of Famer in my book. You're in the Hall of Fame in our books. Hall right, of Fame. Right, right. Uh, I'm gonna I mean, put that on my resume and say you said it. So nah. they call you for reference. <laughs> they they yo, said it. So. Yo, Nike, yeah. if you if you're saying if you're gonna hit up my girl Ray, she's the you know what I mean the new VP of Global Drip Coordination. Oh here. You already know what I'm doing. here. I'm here. I'm available. I'm make we're gonna make sure we're available. When we at Please. Nike when we post the um the episode. Yep. Yep, yep. So, P, man, you know I mean, what is it, man? Uh, what's your what the fuck moment of the week, bro? What the fuck moment of the week, man, was this past uh, Saturday. I was sit- I was sitting down watching uh, the Warriors in the Celtics game. I was sitting back, bro. I was like, what the fuck, man? The- it, was- it was just it was just a great game watching Curry and the young boy Tatum just go at it. I'm like, yo, this this is some great basketball. Because it went down to wire, but that was my what-the-fuck moment of the week because it was such a great game. Curry was not backing down. The young boy Tatum is showing everybody that, yo, he's here. Like, he is here. You know what I mean? So, I think he's hey, just Jason starting Tatum to make it, man. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I, I, nah, I rock with it because – because not only – I mean, I rock with Steph because I'm, I'm always rocking with cats. I'm always going to rock with cats who are my age group. Steph's 32 years old. He's out here, he's out here putting it on. You know what I mean? Shout out to all my 32-year-olds, 31. And, and if you're above 30, you know what I mean? And you and you're out here thriving, shout out to you. Because I put some respect on your name. You know what I mean? Shout out to all my 30-year-olds. <laughs> but, yeah, Steph's 32 is still, is still getting after it, man. But I love JT, though. I love JT, JT for real. Bro, it, it was just a, a, a good watch, bro. It was a great game, bro. It was a great game. So that was my what-the-fuck moment of the week, just watching that great game, them going back and forth. Word, word. Ray, before we go, who you been watching in the NBA right now? In 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 the WNBA, who are you watching? Ooh. NBA right now, Bam and in 
out of Miami. Okay. He's been hooping. He, he, he just got really he just, job. He, he um, just, just got paid. He just got the bag. He just got the bag, but uh, it's not looking too good for him. The playoff picture. So what's up, Bam? I'm hollering at you. Yo, yo, Bam, Bam just hit at me. Man. Hey, man. I mean, come on, Bam. I need more from Bam because he he balled out in the bubble. So he come been, on, Bam. He did. He did. Um, who else? Um, Dame obviously always watching Dame time. him. Just, it's but always like, game time. It's always Portland game. wouldn't be Portland without him. Without right. him, they need to. They need to put. Let me tell you something. Dame is a very disrespected man in the NBA, and I feel like he's just now getting his flowers. But they should have been put respect on his name because the man has been hooping. He's a dog. He's been hooping. He's definitely a dog. They need to put sure. some respect on his name. I think he's number two in the NBA. Um, my book. Okay. Okay. Who we got, got one. God damn. Joel, Joel and B. Okay. <laughs> she ain't no, going back and forth with you. Been... She ain't going back and forth with I'm you. I'm not. I'm not. Because I just I didn't know who you was gonna say because I had a rebuttal, but you said Joel and B. I respect that. I like who, that. Who, because who, okay. before he got injured. Go ahead, go ahead. Before, before he got injured, he, got injured, he was who yeah, he I've was. been waiting for him to have. Yeah. Yes. His breakout season, yep. injury free. The man is a dog. He's unstoppable. Like they can't. Nobody can hang with him. So yes, I I agree with that. But Dane, I'm gonna give them like one A, one B, not Dane. one two, because I just I just feel like Dane has been so disrespected for years. Yes. They need to really give him his shine and give him his flowers because he's been like salute to Dame, salute to B. Uh, 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 but before we go, I mean, uh, the fact that you brought that up, I mean, this is probably gonna be our longest episode, but but this is history, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the Talk Your Shit Sports Podcast. You know I mean, we are we are approaching two hours of amazing content, so you know, I mean, lock in with us. Um, but Ray, yeah, you know I mean, uh, I think uh, I don't think we touched on this, and this is something I really want to touch on because this is important, um, especially as black people. You know I mean, ah, I'm gonna pound the chest because it's lit. So, being from Sierra Leone. Mm-hmm. Having the culture behind yes. you, I mean the motherland, especially what was what, what, what's going on, COVID, social injustice, police brutality, you know, mm-hmm. just in terms of um, 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 just wealth generation for Black people, and even now, folks are considering, I mean, making the pilgrimage to their uh, um, birthplaces or their their ancestors' birthplaces in Africa. So, can you tell us a little bit, I mean, b- about your experience with you know, the African culture and and just how big the game of, of, of basketball and athletics is there in that country. And just, and just, I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I kind of tied that into like your love for you know, MB because that's your, <laughs> you know I, mean? I mean, your motherland brother. So, you know I mean, I mean, shout out to bro, shout out to bro. But, uh, but yeah, just talk a little bit more about like the influence of the African culture on just global sports and just your, in your experience. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm going to say if you're a star, like, you know, athlete over there, because I'm going to say soccer is like the big thing, obviously over there, football, whatever. So they're super into that. Um, And then just like the global impact of basketball. So they know like the big names, obviously. So like the LeBrons and the Jordans, the Kobe's, they have all of that. Um, But I think it's super dope to see like the Joel Embiid, and I'm going to go to the women's game too. So Chenea Bumake, Neko Bumake really putting on for you know what I mean like their country Nigerian, every time right? I see Chanae uh, first say yeah they're Nigerian um they come on and she'd be like shout out you know what I mean it's always some type of shout out so I think that's super dope um and you mentioned something about people trying to I mean low-key discover their roots and kind of take that pilgrim- pilgrimage yeah. back to the motherland. I am 100% for it, and I feel like people should do it. Even if you are just going to take a trip or anything like that, I'm going to plug that. This is my plug here. You should go <laughs> back to Africa. You know what I mean? If you can do it, if you have the means to do it, if you have the time to do it, to just see like a different culture i mean because in the u.s things are you know for the longest time everybody like the usa is the best country which we're learning that we i mean not even learning we've known obviously we know, we know yeah. what's up. there's always been flaws here you know what i mean so going back and really learning a different culture and i'm going to say i 
hadn't been back to Sierra Leone. And I was, like I said, I was born in the States, but my mom and dad are both from Sierra Leone, born and raised, like migrated over here, lived in Texas, moved up here. So strong background in that. I recently went back in 2019 in December and it was my first time since I was like a child, but just getting to see the culture, meeting a bunch of family members that I probably never met before or just hadn't seen since, like I said, I was a child, but just being engulfed into the like the tradition and all of that stuff was so amazing to me. It was one of the greatest experiences ever. So I feel like for people, if you are really, I'm not even gonna say searching, but just you really wanna get um, a different travel experience, that's one, but then also just kind of getting back to your roots. If I know a lot of people are doing like that ancestry and stuff, and I am so fortunate that I didn't have to do that because I know where my roots are from. There's a lot of people who don't. So I think really trying to take a deep dive into that, but taking the initiative to just be like, I want to learn about this. I want to learn more about this tradition. I want to, you know, get myself really involved in like the culture or just get some experience and background and history on it. I think it's super great because I feel like a lot of people nice. in the U.S. were feeling kind of misplaced a little bit, especially with the social justice. Like you want to say that you're an American, but we have black skin. So people are looking at us like you know if we don't still to this day people say go back to your country and I'm like what the hell are you talking about right and now it's like maybe I will because y'all tripping up here like maybe I will go back you know what I mean so I think that is what sparked a lot of people's curiosity or interest in being like yeah no I do want to go back to Africa we all know that is where it all started they know too they just be trying yeah. to not talk yeah. about it but it's because cool <laughs> we know um facts all, all so yeah facts. i think that's definitely what sparked everyone's interest what's current what the current state of our country has made people want to take a deeper dive into their identity and their family and they're just like let me get back to my roots because you know what i thought i was or what i thought was happening here for me in the united states like i'm an american but they're not treating me like one you know what i mean so you know, our rights, my, my life is not equal to this white person over here. It's not the same. We see that so blatantly now um, right. and have been for years, obviously. Right. But, you know, social media, we got phones everywhere recording everything. So I think it really just, like I said, maybe made people take a deeper dive and look into stuff like I want to explore other things. This is not what I thought it was. So let me look into some other Facts. shit. And Facts. no, I encourage it. So if y'all ever Let's get the chance it. or opportunity to go to Africa, travel, check it out, you should 100%. We're going. We're going ASAP. We're going yeah. ASAP. We definitely going to record yeah, do it, an episode, episodes in the motherland. So it's coming. Yeah. It's coming you because we, we're global. But um, yeah. I mean, yes. Ray, thank you so much. We salute wow. you. Right. Listen, Ray blessed thank us. You, you blessed us with some amazing stories, some gems, some lessons. And 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 you know, the next generation is going to be much appreciated about your about your journey. So don't know, don't don't ever go thinking that your 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 journey was in vain because you're motivating someone else. You're giving someone else the blueprint to go out there and get money and just have you know a mindset and attitude and just really go out and get it and just really just have joy in basketball right. you know, or just whatever you're doing because your 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 connection and just how you feel about Nike is just a pure just a pure joy standpoint from like, yo, I'm an athlete. This was, I played my best games in some Nike apparel and, 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 and you know I mean, so I, mean I want to see my people win. <laughs> so, you know I mean, one Absolutely. thing, we, one thing before we get out of here is we always leave the people with something like inspirational. So what is it that you want to leave the people with younger athletes? What's something that you live by a motto or anything quote or whatever that you want to impart on the people? Oh man. This is, that's a good question. Um, it's all good. If you need a minute, I'll start with P. If you need a minute, I'll start with P. Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me a minute. Because right, I got right. two right now. I'm trying to. Right. Go ahead, P. What you got? So this week I got, um, this quote is um, from Rockefeller. Don't be afraid to, to give up the good to go for great. So just don't shortchange yourself, man. Just, if you, if, if there's greater, go for greater. Don't just. 
just don't 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 settle for just to be good or average. Just go if there's an option to go greater, just go greater, man. Don't show change yourself, man. All right, good shit. Yeah, no, that's lit. That's lit. Um, you know, for me, it's uh, I mean, at 32 years old, still figuring life out, but you know, me still, you know, you know, as it as as Ray said earlier, I mean, being someone who writes down their goals and to-do lists every day, that's something that I do. You know, I'm always trying to move a step forward. I'm always trying to get better next step. So my thing is, there are no excuses for us to not um, um, figure out or find our potential. There's no reason for it. There's like, there's absolutely no excuse. Put yourself out there, take the necessary steps, grind it out. Do not lean on, oh, this is just how I am. I mean, not being successful is not how you are, Black people. We got it. We got the juice. I mean, we are well prepared to be out here to dominate. So just really go out there and get it and realize you're up. And, and, and do as much as you can to realize your potential because you owe people. You owe your parents, you owe whoever supported you, the coaches, the mentors, whoever spoke life into you. So that's really important. And I'm, I'm pushing all the younger athletes, man, to really go out there and get it. And like, there's just no excuses. What you got, Ray? What you got for us? All right, I got two for y'all. The first right. one I'm going to say is trust the process. And I think we talked about that. That is so, it's like, look, you know, you hear that all the time. It's kind of cliche but it's so important right to trust your process so all the work that you put in up until the point where you are now even me looking back on my journey I didn't really give myself flowers in the moment I didn't really talk Mm -hmm. my shit I'm just like you know as it's happening I'm in the moment and I'm thinking like okay I got to get past this to get here but you really got to give yourself like that time to really work through things and also you need to congratulate yourself on the way there's always going to be other people like I, that's why I love the name of your podcast like I said that's one of my phrases I always am talking to my friends like hey talk your shit queen talk your shit, talk your queen. shit. like ah. bust yourself up you need that you right. know what I mean right. um but just trust in the process along the way there's obviously going to be bumps in the road and like that's another thing that's a little cliche but you really got to trust the process. If you have an end goal in sight, do not steer away from that goal. There's always going to be something or someone that may try to hinder you or deter you from your track. And there's no straight line to a process. You won't have to hit, you know what I mean? Some side streets and hit a U-turn and all kinds of stuff like that. Because I personally believe that anything that happens to you, obviously along your journey is a learning lesson. Right. And it could be something you tried because you thought you wanted to do it, but you get into it and you're like, actually, this is not for me. But maybe in that you learned something else. And it was like, well, actually, I like this piece of it so I can pick this out. And now this is a part of my process. So there's no linear line. There's no blueprint for your process, but you just really need to trust it. Um, and then the other one is one of my favorite quotes from the alchemists. And it's um, and when you want something, all the universe conspires into helping you achieve it. And I actually had that tattooed on me. That was one quote from that book that spoke to me. I got that right after I um, I got my MBA a couple years ago. So just me being on that journey and I'm just like, there's all this stuff that's happening to me because I was hesitant to go back to school. Um, but there was all these signs that were hitting me and I'm just like, no, this is the right path. Like just something clicked within me. But like I said, there was all these outside signs. I'm talking to people and I would talk to random people and they're just like, yeah, so what are you doing right now? And then I would tell them and talk to them about it. And they were hyping me more up more than I was hyped about it myself. So I'm just like, this is the universe telling me that I'm on the right path and I need to stick to it. So that's, that's, that's what I got. My two quotes I'm going to leave y'all with. Oh, that's Liz. She got skin in the game. It's tattooed on her. It's a lifestyle. Yep. It's a lifestyle, ladies and gentlemen. Um, boy, we covered a lot. You know what I mean, you can only find us here on the Talking Shit Sports Podcast. Lock in, pull up, tell a friend. You already know what it is. Add us on Instagram. Come subscribe to our, our Talk Your Shit Sports Podcast YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook at the Talk Your Shit Sports Podcast. I mean, wherever you're looking, uh, wherever you listen to your podcast, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Anchor. Again, Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to it, come subscribe, come listen, come really dive in and learn about you know, some of these amazing young athletes across the country who are doing, who are continuing to doing amazing things after, you know, they hung, hung up their sneakers, man. But I mean, are really just making a, a tremendous um, impact in, the, in their community. So we salute you. We give you your flowers, Ray. 
It is lit. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? I appreciate it. Ah, Thank y'all so much for having me. Good. Nike, yeah. holla at Ray. Holla at Ray. Holla at me. And also, hey, follow, subscribe, everything yep. you got to do. Repost this. Tune in to Talk Your Shit Podcast. I'm going to talk my shit for y'all. Talk Your Shit Sports follow, Podcast. You already know what it talk is. Talk Your Shit Sports <laughs> Podcast. Tune in. Check it out. Dope ah, platform. And we lit. And we out.